Item number SCP-3887. Index, monster under the bed. Object class, Euclid. Special containment procedures. SCP-3887-A is to be housed within a standard humanoid containment cell at Site-17. A one-way mirror is to be positioned on the opposite side of the bed. At least two personnel should be stationed in the observation room at all times. SCP-3887-A must receive a vitamin integrator with its ordinary food intake due to minor health issues. To maintain SCP-3887-A's mental health and ensure its cooperation, it has been allowed control of the lights inside its cell. In case of emergency, control of said lights can still be overridden by monitoring personnel in the observation room to limit or otherwise impair aggressive behavior from SCP-3887-B. SCP-3887-A must be supplied with new socks every three days. Since containment, SCP-3887-A has made the following requests. One computer with internet connection. Denied. One computer with access to SCP-3887-A's old game gallery. Approved under the condition that any updates are made off-site. A house cat. Denied. A gaming controller. Approved. Access to up-to-date entertainment media. Approved. Access to on-site recreational areas. Denied. SCP-3887-A is allowed access to the on-site gym for health issues once per week, while accompanied by at least one level 03 personnel provided with a 320 lux flashlight. Description. SCP-3887-A is a 24-year-old woman of European descent, formerly known as... SCP-3887-A was a resident of... Missouri. SCP-3887-A has been in complete cooperation with the Foundation after the events of... Incident 3887-A-1. SCP-3887-B is a humanoid entity 2.35 meters tall, with skin that is grayish-green in color. It has two long horns growing from its forehead, similar in form to an oryx gamma scimitar oryx, and long black hair growing from its head, neck, and shoulder blades. SCP-3887-Bs have yellow sclera, with no visible pupil. SCP-3887-B's mouth hosts three rows of fangs, similar in shape and arrangement to the Carcharius taurus, ball shark. SCP-3887-B has elongated arms, forcing it to remain in a hunched posture and to move on all fours most of the time. It possesses a long, hairless tail, similar to a Ratus novagicus, common rat. SCP-3887-B possesses both male and female reproductive organs. Testing has shown that any substance or material presented to SCP-3887 so far is able to be used as sustenance. But it has shown a clear predilection for SCP-3887-A's socks. SCP-3887-B was initially believed to be capable of manifesting through any dark area within a 5-meter radius around SCP-3887-A, favoring the bed. After further testing, it has been noted that SCP-3887-B can always manifest under whatever item SCP-3887-A identifies as its bed, regardless of its distance from SCP-3887-A. SCP-3887-B is extremely sensitive to light. Its skin rapidly develops blisters and open wounds when exposed to levels of light above 20 lux, forcing SCP-3887-B to flee and disappear into the closest dark area. The process through which it escapes is currently not understood and is undergoing further study. DNA analysis of SCP-3887-B's tissue samples have revealed that it shares genetic material with... Homo sapiens, Oryx dama, Carcharius taurus, Ratus novagicus, Rinella marina, Cane toad, and an unidentified additional genetic component. SCP-3887-B's presence has been observed to disrupt and damage digital recording devices. With said interference worsening, the more of SCP-3887-B is exposed. SCP-3887-B has shown aversion towards Foundation personnel, but has avoided any hostile actions to date so as to not upset SCP-3887-A.
SCP-3887-A has shown a strong emotional attachment to SCP-3887-B, and has often been observed acting in an affectionate manner with SCP-3887-B when they are alone. Incident 3887-A-1 SCP-3887-A and SCP-3887-B were recovered on 2014 after the reported death of Robert, SCP-3887-A's partner at the time, during a party. Eyewitnesses stated that SCP-3887-A's date was humiliating SCP-3887-A in front of the guests and acting in a demeaning manner, as was reported to be a characteristic of their relationship. SCP-3887-B manifested itself under a table, assaulting until SCP-3887-A's date had her limbs completely severed, after which SCP-3887-B demanifested. When the authorities arrived, SCP-3887-A was in a state of shock. See Interrogation Log 3887-A-1 for further details. Interview 3887-A-1 Interviewer Undercover Agent Bellamy Interviewee SCP-3887-A Notes This interview was taken two hours after Incident 3887-A-1. Agent Bellamy How are you feeling? SCP-3887-A. Silence for approximately 20 seconds. What am I supposed to feel after what happened? I didn't... I didn't mean for it to happen. I didn't want that. I... Please, miss, take your time. No. No, I'm okay, officer. I have to make it right, somehow. This is all my fault. I see. Very well. Maybe you can help us shed some light on what happened. The other eyewitnesses said that wasn't treating you very well before the incident happened. Am I correct? I... Well, yes, she was being a bit rough. Silence for around four seconds. And then the entity attacked. Is there anything you can tell me about that creature? Any idea why it attacked? I believe she was trying to protect me. Oh, God. SCP-3887-A shows signs of distress. I... It's crazy. I always imagined I was crazy, but... Oh, you're going to think I'm a nutcase, too. I need to hear what you have to say before I make any decisions. Please, miss. We need to make sure it doesn't hurt anyone else. Is there anything at all you can tell us? Oh, no. No, she wouldn't. She's not evil, I promise. She wouldn't hurt a fly, please. She... Grinda used to be my boogeyman. Could you please elaborate? W well, you know, when you're a kid and you think the craziest things hide in the darkness. When I lived in... My parents' home was very, very old. An old farmhouse in the country with this old barn filled with rats. We even had a well. Anyway, there were always a lot of creaking noises. So, whenever I went to bed, she was the one stalking me in the dark, you know. I always saw her tail sticking out, or her pale arms reaching up to grab me. So I hid under the blankets, and, well, I was afraid. But I was very little. Sounds silly now, doesn't it? Not at all. Please, continue. So, well, she kept creeping under my bed, in the shadows, moving things, knocking things over. She was a mean one. My parents thought she was just something I made up to blame when stuff broke, even though it really was her fault. It all went on like this for years. I was a very lonely child. I understand. So, when did you first realize it wasn't just something you made up? When? Well, first, I started to see her less and less as I got older. What else would you expect, right? But when I was around 14, I think, maybe 15, she came back. It was late at night. My parents were arguing as usual, and I hid in my room. I was close to the bed, and... 
she touched me. I was scared shitless, but we talked. She has been with me since. She's a good person, I promise. Please, this was all my fault. Thank you for your time, miss. Some people will want to speak to you further. We'll keep you here until then. After the interview, SCP-3887-A was escorted to a secure cell before meeting Foundation personnel, who explained the situation. As long as SCP-3887-B would not be hurt, SCP-3887-A promised full cooperation. Interview 3887-B-1 Interviewer, Dr. Tanner Interviewee, SCP-3887-B Notes, this was the first interview made with SCP-3887-B. The interview occurred while SCP-3887-A was asleep after their arrival at their first stop in sight. SCP-3887-B addressed Dr. Tanner during a routine check of the room. It was the first observation of SCP-3887-B. SCP-3887-B, what are you looking for? There's nothing here but little old me. Dr. Tanner, what's that? I, sorry, I didn't mean to disturb you. Are you the entity SCP-3887-A spoke of? I would assume so. Yeah, I would assume the same. Don't wake her. Poor dearie needs her sleep. Unidentified clicking noises. She hasn't done anything wrong. It was all my fault. I assure you, this is not a punishment. We are doing this so she can be safe and protected. The same goes for you, too. We can keep you safe. I am safe as long as she is. She was my child, and I have already broken enough rules now. And to add to that, now I've gotten her in trouble with her own people. Can you elaborate? What do you mean when you say SCP-3887-A was your child? Isn't she? And... His daughter? Well, yeah, duh. I mean, kids are my kind's first source of food. Some, like me, just feast on fear, stress, and anxiety, while others tend to be a bit more... rough. What? Didn't you have a monster under your bed, too, when you were a kid? Smarty pants. Not that I can remember. No. Okay, weird. Anyway, I was supposed to feed on her till she was like... Ten, then move on to another kid. That's what we do, since children are such easy prey. But I kind of got stuck with her. Look at her. She's so innocent and sweet. She was always so nice to me, even when she was scared. She started tossing me socks to use for a snack. SCP-3887-B emits a loud gurgling sound. Saliva is seen leaking from under the bed. Then she started to grow up. She stopped calling to me. Till her parents started their divorce. She needed someone to listen to her. So, I take it you have a very good relationship with her. Could you elaborate on what rules you broke? The laws made by your kind. What can you tell me about your species? I broke the rules, and they exiled me to my cave. I can't go back up there. But I can come out here. Let me show you. The entity starts to emerge from under the bed. Video feed becomes increasingly more disturbed, showing Dr. Tanner stepping back as SCP-3887-B emerges. Interview 3887-A-23 Interviewer, Dr. Garden Interviewee, SCP-3887-A Dr. Garden Good morning, SCP-3887-A. Did you sleep well? SCP-3887-A. Yes, we did. Me and Grinda talked a lot, but I think it helped me sleep. That's good to hear. Now, today, I would like you to tell me a little more about the theory you told me about last time, about how SCP-3887-B came to be. Do you think we can tackle that? 
Ah, yeah, sure. I can do that. Okay, so last time you said you created SCP-3887-B based on what scared you. Can you elaborate on that? Yeah, of course. It is quite simple, actually. I mean, you have seen Grenda, haven't you? I find her cute now, but when I was a kid, she was very frightening. The teeth. Like a shark. I remember my parents brought me to an aquarium once, and in one of the tanks there was this massive bull shark. It had the craziest look, and those fangs were so scary. And that night, go figure, Grenda smiled and I saw the same fangs. I understand. The same reasoning goes for the rest of its body? Her body? But yes, I guess so. I can tell you for sure, I was scared of the rats crawling through the fields around the house. And I... SCP-3887-A pauses for 13 seconds. I mean, when I was little. Like, very little. I was apparently scared of boobs. Or at least, that's what Mum used to tell me. Hence why Grenda has such a bloated chest. It does make sense, right? It would look like it. So, you think you are the cause for SCP-3887-B's existence? That it depends on you to exist? It's the only thing that makes sense, right? I made her. That's why she helps me. She keeps me company. She doesn't make me feel alone, and she listens to me. With her, I'm not really alone. I mean, when I don't need her, she vanishes, and she pops out again when I do. I understand. Thank you for your time, SCP-3887-A. We can stop here for today. Interview 3887-B-7 Interviewer, Dr. Garden Interviewee, SCP-3887-B Notes, the interview was taken while SCP-3887-A was taking part in its weekly training session. Dr. Garden. Good day, SCP-3887-B. SCP-3887-B. Does not respond. Distorted video feed confirms the entity is present under the bed. SCP-3887-B. Is everything okay? I am hungry, woman. I have little patience for your questioning today. Hungry? I am quite sure we had SCP-3887-A feed you her socks yesterday. Were they not enough? Socks are just a snack, woman. My race lives off fear, even if she's an adult. Used to have all the fears and paranoia any functional adult would have. But now that she's here, she has calmed right down. It's not like she has much to worry about now, does she? Well... I understand you have her well-being in high consideration. Shouldn't that be nice to know? Of course I am, but I am starving here. What trickles around here is not enough for me. I need more. I'm sure we can find a solution to this problem. I'll make sure to make my superiors aware. Now, about the interview. I need to feed. I need to feed now. What's the... Additional notes. At this point, the camera feed becomes completely unstable, as Dr. Walker, who was stationed in the observation room at this time, reported that he watched as SCP-3887-B's arms emerged from under the bed and seized Dr. Garden before dragging her into the darkness, disappearing from the sight. SCP-3887-A was immediately recalled to its room and prompted to call for SCP-3887-B, but without any apparent result. Thirteen minutes after disappearing, Dr. Garden was suddenly expelled from under the bed, bruised, completely wet, missing her shoes, glasses, and socks, but mostly unharmed. Dr. Garden was later interviewed. Interview 3887-Alpha Interviewer, Dr. Walker Interviewee, Dr. Garden Notes. This interview was taken after a preliminary medical check following the events of interview log 3887-B-7. 
Dr. Walker, how are you feeling, Amelia? Are you sure you want to do this now? It can wait after a proper medical exam and mental check, if you prefer. Dr. Garden, I'm fine, thank you. Do not treat me like a child. Let's get this over with. As you wish, then. Can you tell me what happened after SCP-3887-B grabbed you? Yes. After the entity grabbed me, I immediately tried to free myself, even though I knew it would be almost impossible to get loose. It dragged me under the bed and into the darkness with it, but once I was beneath the bed frame, it pulled me downwards as if through the floor. You know the sensation when you suddenly feel yourself falling? That sudden pull at your belly. I felt that. The lights of the room vanished, and it was all black. Pitch black. It lasted, I'd say, fifteen seconds. Yes, fifteen seconds before I reached the ground. Was SCP-3887-B with you during all of this? It was holding on to me while I was falling, but once I reached the floor, it was nowhere. I felt it was there. I just couldn't see it. But on the other hand, I could now see what was around me. I was in a cave, I'd say roughly 50 meters in diameter. Black rock, I think it was some kind of granite. There was a waterfall, a lake, and violet gems littering the walls. I would say amethysts, if not for the fact they were glowing. Like lots and lots of little candles. Oh, and there was a hole where sunlight was coming in through, in the ceiling. Sunlight? Well, that is surprising. Nothing else particularly peculiar there? On the contrary. Right after I looked up, I noticed that there were lots of other holes in the cavern ceiling. But they were all dark. While looking at the sunny one, I noticed what appeared to be a ripped rope dangling from it. In the cave itself, there wasn't much. But on the large rock platform above the water, I found what I feel safe to assume is SCP-3887-B's home. I found piles of socks, some odd-looking stuffed animals, a little violin, and at least three pictures of SCP-3887-A. I understand. What about SCP-3887-B? Ah, yes. Well, during all of this, from the moment I ended up there, to once I emerged. I was terrified. I could hear that thing moving in the dark, stalking me. I admit, I felt like it was going to kill me. I could see her fangs, her eyes, her... Dr. Garden goes silent for five seconds. It's claws. Apologies. I was running around, screaming. I even fell in the water, lost my shoes in that blasted pond. I tried to find a hole to hide in and I wouldn't be able to tell you how many times I fell on the ground, trying to run away from SCP-3887-B. And yet, I don't think I actually saw it even once. And how did you escape from there? Well, I was suddenly grabbed by SCP-3887-B. It felt like it appeared from the dark, but I was feeling so terrified I just as likely didn't see it approaching. She lifted me up. I think she smiled at me with all those jagged fangs. I was sure she... It was going to eat me when it rose me higher and opened its mouth. Instead, it grabbed my socks and pulled them off, then started to chew on them. I think it even said, thank you, before tossing me into one of the holes. I felt like I was being sucked away. There was darkness, that pulling again. And next thing I knew... I was back, under the bed, with all of you around me. I see. Thank you, Amelia. I think we can conclude this interview here. Additional notes. After the incident, SCP-3887-A and SCP-3887-B were observed talking with one another. SCP-3887-A relayed SCP-3887-B's apologies to Dr. Garden. To date, SCP-3887-B has refused to bring anyone else into its home.